What I know about Lucy? Born in a small town in South Mississippi in 1955. Became a great female basketball player. At one time, was the greatest in the United States. As a matter of fact, the New Orleans Jazz drafted Lucy. The first woman to be a teacher they drafted by a men's basketball team. I don't know what else to say about her. <laughs> She's retired now <laughs> and living a happy life. How would you know? <laughs> because I'm Lucy. <laughs> Growing up in a pretty much all-black community, everybody knew each other. That was 11 of us, a big family. Next to the last, Lucia May Harris. Lucy. My parents were sharecroppers, so we would pick cotton when we came home from school. That was our way of making a living. I know we went without, but we didn't want for anything. A lot of the kids would gather at our house to play ball because they didn't have a goal, and we did. <laughs> I would stay up long past our bedtime and put a quilt over the TV and over my head so I could watch Bill Russell Wilt Chamberlain, Kareem, Oscar Robinson, my favorite, Lucy. You better go to bed. You got school in the morning. <laughs> okay, Mama, I, I'm going. And I'll watch it a little bit more. <laughs> I wanted to grow up and have my own family, and I wanted to shoot that ball just like they would shoot it. <laughs> I was taller than everyone else in my class. 6'3". They would tease me, long and tall, and that's all. That I was tall, and I couldn't do anything else. That wasn't true. I became a member of the team, but I didn't know how to play. I had to learn how to play defense, offense, pivot. I did develop a shot. It just came natural. I remember one game. I had scored 40 points. Their whole team had not scored 40 points. <laughs> My whole attitude changed about my height. It became an asset. <laughs> Long and tall, and that's not all. 72, Title IX was passed. Whatever you provide for the men, you have to provide for the women also. I had heard from Mr. Hemphill that, you know, Del State was starting a basketball program for women. Equality. I had made up in my mind that I was going to go to Alcorn. It's a black school, but they didn't have a women's basketball program. So I changed my mind. <laughs> they can play ball when they get here. All that I have to do is put them together as a team. Being the only black on this team, I had to adjust to that. I wasn't really close to anybody on the team, but once we got on that floor, you couldn't tell. When I got the ball, I knew my job was to score. And more than likely, I would score. <laughs> got to the semifinal. 
the game that determined whether you go on to nationals. <laughs> and we lost that one game. Man, we were highly upset. And we got together as a team, and we told each other, if we get this far next year, we're going to go on to the national tournament. Now, NCAA had not taken over then. It was just for the men. Couldn't play with the men at that time. Larry Bird, Magic, they were NCAA. But women had AIAW, the Association for Intercollegiate Athletics for Women. We went all the way. The name of the team to beat was the Macalada. They had won three national championships. So we had said we were going to win three national championships too. <laughs> they were undefeated. They had a lot of nuns <laughs> because that was a Catholic school. <laughs> nuns that were cheering for them and they were beating on buckets. We had a big crowd from Cleveland. Very noisy group. It was so loud in there that you couldn't hardly hear anything. Going number 6-3, the score for Delta State, number 45, Lucia Harris. Rounding up the starting five for a Macanada, it's Renee Mew. Margaret Wade, a fine person and an excellent coach. And Margaret, I know your team is very tired. You've had some very... Most of the time, she wouldn't say anything. She would just open up her jacket. And then say, give them hell. <laughs> Here comes the tag. Rosie Adams tosses it up. And it's controlled by Dunn. David brought the ball down the court. Pass it to Wanda or Ramona. And they would pass it to me. Working the ball inside as they often do to Lucy Harris. Oh, they're not going to win. <laughs> I said, oh, yeah. <laughs> Didn't go there for a while. And now she gets a chance to hit it again. She misses it. Lucy with a rebound. She's good. Incredible basketball tonight. A small town team, and we won the game. And Delta State University's lady statesmen have done it. Defending champion, Immaculata has been upset tonight, 90 to 81. Margaret Wade is in tears. And I know that we have seen demonstrated here some of the finest basketball skills in the country. I agree, and it's exciting. I think women's basketball has come of age this week. A lot of people began to follow the game, a lot of fans. The men's team draws only half as many fans as the women, who regularly sell out the school's 4,500-seat field house. We began to travel more. That was the first time that I had flown on the airplane. As a matter of fact, the men didn't fly. <laughs> and the women did. I guess the women were bringing in the money. No comment. <laughs> Their main weapon is number 45, Lucia Harris. 
always a dominating inside force. Her scoring and rebounding is a must if Delta is to claim its second straight national title. Nobody expected us to win back-to-back -back championship. An intense rivalry has built up between Delta and Immaculata. And tonight's game has national supremacy on the line. So we won. <laughs> Success. Cleveland, a peaceful community in the heart of the Mississippi Delta, a town of friendly people, rich agriculture, and the lady statesman basketball team of Delta State University, twice national champs after only four years of existence as a team. And I look up to Lucy because she's like the greatest woman player that's ever been, and to me, you know, that's something really great. I think she... She's special because she can do about anything. She drives, she rebounds, she jumps, she blocks shots. She's tough. Lucy, well, she's hard to describe, really. She's like one in a million. I don't think there'll ever be another ball player like her. And to have the personality that she has and be as humble as she is, it's really incredible. It's hard to explain. Well, attention, you know, to me is, is saying that a lot of people are interested in what we're doing, you know, and they're keeping up with it, and I think that's good. Montreal. That was the very first time that women's basketball was placed in the Olympics. Number seven, number seven, Lucia Paris. It was just unreal. We played Japan, the very first game. They shot the first basket, <laughs> but they missed. Came back down the court, Ann Myers passed me the ball. I shot it and made it. That was the first basket in the history of Olympic women basketball. And Ann Myers said, that's history. I said, oh, yeah, <laughs> maybe that is history. <laughs> now, that's a record that'll never be broken. <laughs> Lucia Harris. We won the silver medal. I uh, wanted my parents to be proud of me, and they were. Make you feel special. The center for Delta State, a 6'3 senior from Minter City, Mississippi, co-captain number 45, Lucy Harris. Delta State has won its third consecutive. AIAW National Basketball Championship. I really have enjoyed myself, you know, being, you know, playing on the last uh, intercollegiate basketball team that I will play on. And uh, we really appreciate what all of you have done. Thank you. I wanted to keep playing. But there was no place to go. There was no WNBA <laughs> when I came along. Didn't exist. My high school sweetheart, George, asked me to marry him. I said yes. There are different forms of mental illness. My form is bipolar. It didn't surface until after I stopped playing. I
phone ring. Someone from New Orleans Jazz calling, looking for Lucy. We want you to come and try out for the team. We had already decided to start a family. I just thought it was a publicity start. And I felt like I didn't think I was good enough. Competing against a woman, yes. It's a different story, competing against a man. So I decided not to go. And I said no to the NBA. When I realized I don't have a job to just try to make it. You know, to just try to make a living for myself and for my family. I was looking for a coaching job and just having a feeling of not wanting to be there, not wanting to be where I am. I think it took its toll. I had a nervous breakdown and I had to, uh, I had to return home. I got a job at Amanda LG, my old high school, and I became the head coach there. And I uh, began to pick myself up. As the years went on by, it seemed like all of that was a separate life. I never picked up a newspaper to read an article about how good I was. I clipped the newspaper articles out and put them in my scrapbook until after my career was over. That's when I went back and started reading about what I did as a player. Three-time national champions. Olympian. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> I have good memories about basketball. The NBA. I don't regret not going. Not even a little bit. <laughs> Why not? Christopher is a lawyer. Eddie has a master's. Christina received a doctorate. Krista has a doctorate in education, which she received from uh, Delta State. The athletes, all of them. <laughs> Mama, I didn't know you, you was a star. I said, yeah, I had my days. <laughs> if I was a man, then there, there would have been options for me to go further and play. I certainly would have had money. <laughs> would have been able to do a lot of a lot of things that I would have wanted to do. Yeah, they're millionaires. Famous. But I wanted to grow up and shoot that ball just like they would shoot it. <laughs> And I did. As a matter of fact, I was inducted into the Hall of Fame. First female athlete, me and Neuro White, escorted by Oscar Robinson. My favorite. But as far as singling me out, I think there's a lot of other women who are, who are just as great as I am.
basketball has come a long way. Maybe the world would have known my name had I continued playing. But I didn't, <laughs> so I don't speculate. <laughs>